Do you ever find yourself going through your Finder or your File Explorer, trying to find that specific file that you're trying to find? Maybe it's a photo, maybe it's a video, but there's so many different folders that you have to go through just to find that one photo. And it takes a long time just trying to press spacebar. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And it may take you hours just to find that one file that you're looking for. Having sidebars and different shortcuts does make this a little bit faster, but sometimes it's just not a possibility. So what can you do? One, you could hire someone to do it for you. Two, you could suck it up and take all that time to find it. Or three, you can go and download Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge is actually one of the few Adobe softwares that are completely free without the use of a subscription. So I would recommend to go and download that for anyone watching this and I'll explain why in a bit. And I'll throw a link in the description just to make it easier for you to find it. Once you have it all installed, it's gonna look a little something like this. Maybe not with a Mario character, but that's what I've used here to make my folder icon with and my screenshot folder is Spider-Man. Maybe I'll explain that in another video, but this is what it looks like. Here we have a bunch of windows and areas that really kind of don't make sense too much, but it's a lot easier than it seems. So let's just jump right in. Here we can see I have a DJI Copilot plugged in and my Macintosh HD root folder. If you haven't seen the video on the DJI Copilot, I'll link it right up here. If you wanna go check that out, I highly recommend this product for any photographer or filmmaker who wants to back up their footage or just wants easy access between your phone and your computers. So I have a few things backed up on this drive now. I'll go into the backups and this is a SD card that I've backed up. Here we can see some of the photos and videos that I've shot earlier in this month. And this right here is one of the biggest benefits for me right off the bat is that there's pretty quick previews and I can see that all in one screen. Whereas with Finder, it's not as intuitive to go and find all this. And then it takes a little bit longer to enter into we have all of these photos and we can go through and change up the view, but having them all in one screen here where we can just click through and preview and change this size up if we want really helps and makes it a lot easier. You can even preview your videos straight from this window. This is gonna be a little bit choppy because this is a physical hard drive and not an SSD, but this drive excels more in the backup and its functionality compared to the speed. So just having this one window where you can preview all of your photos, your photos, your photos, your photos, and all your videos that you've taken, and really makes it a lot faster to find all of your files. And you also might notice that I'm previewing JPEG and DNG files here. So just having this preview window makes it faster, but Adobe Bridge goes a lot deeper than just previewing. Here we can see if I click on this image, one of my favorite images that I've ever, ever taken. We can see all the settings and the metadata behind this image. Let's pull this up for better viewing. I shot at f2.8, 1 13th shutter speed, ISO 420, the resolution, the file size, date created, date modified. All of this super deep metadata is all shown here, whereas it might take a lot longer to get to that information for each photo if you were going through the Finder or the File Explorer. You can even see here that since I was flying my drone, it even includes the latitude, longitude, and altitude of the drone while I was flying. So it really goes into detail about all the specifics of the images or all the files. Next up, beside this metadata, we also have keywords. So these are the preset keywords that come installed, but you can just right click and delete them, make a new keyword and let's say drone photos. And then we can also add a sub keyword and call it on the lake. So I can start keywording all of these photos. Um, we can select a bunch, keyword them all. 
We also have a rating system here so I can rate them and I think those ratings translate into Lightroom as well. If you control click, you can also compare uh, your files in the preview window, which is also another little bonus here. And you can preview up to nine files all within the same window. Once you start selecting more, it just says how many items are selected and you can't scroll through. So max here is nine. But if you wanted to take a better look, you can also increase the preview size down here. This is gonna be a little bit more work for it. So it's gonna take a bit of time. Uh, we can scale this over and then take some better look over here. So let's say we had just opened up our SD card into Bridge and we're scrolling through our SD card. We can select our photos. We can move to or we can copy to different folders. Or maybe you're looking to back up your images. You can copy to and I can just throw them into my DJI Copilot. There's also a batch renaming. So it opens up this window here where you can customize how you want to rename it. You can add different file extensions and numbers and all that stuff here. And it'll show the current and the new file names here. So it's really robust in terms of file management and file exploring. There's also a quick export. I don't really know what kind of exporting you would need to do for this. Maybe you have a bunch of raw photos that you want just the unedited raw photos turned into JPEGs. This is probably where you would go ahead and select them all and maybe create a new preset. Maybe export to JPEG with full image quality. Then you can just drag the image onto the preset and start export. And there we have it, file is exported. Next we have collections. So if you have any files that you want quickly accessed, you can start creating a new collection and you can select them and then create a new collection and rename it photos. Then you can add a smart collection which has different filters that will automatically populate the collection with. So maybe if I had some stock photos that I wanted to add, then I would go into my library, select all of these, go to collections and add stock photos. So now whenever I find new stock photos that I want to add, I can just drag and drop into that collection. Nice and easy, nice and quick. And you can see that it always shows the breadcrumbs of the files that you're viewing here. We also have the option to go back and forth and have some quick view folders here as well. If you want an even better view of seeing all of your files, you can go up to review mode here. And this will show all of the files that you have here. And you can just scroll left and right Within this window, there is still more uh, little options that you can go through. There's different ways that you can view and view the thumbnails and view your file structure up here or your favorites. But that's pretty much this essentials page. Go If you go to your libraries page, you get this library window. And, and this is similar to all the other Adobe library windows that you see in all the other softwares. Clearly, I don't really use Adobe libraries very extensively, so there's not really much going on here. But this is where you can access them if you really want to. Maybe I'll have to try and explore that a little bit more myself. And then inside this library, we also have a different view here with a content window film strip that we can go through and preview up here. So it's a bit of a different view from the essentials, but if you really wanted to, you can drag and drop the windows as you can in other Adobe softwares and resize them to fit your needs. Same with Filmstrip, it's the same thing, but minus the libraries here. But in Filmstrip, we see a new one here. We have ratings. So this is a filter system based on the different features of all the files that you have. And it'll show how many of each file is in that sort of filter. 
So if we go to file type here, we see I have 13 DNG images. If I select the checkbox, it just shows the DNG images here. And I can deselect that and it shows me all of them. Select the JPEG and it'll show me only the JPEGs. Select the MP4s and it only shows me MP4s. And then if you really want to, you can also filter really in depth, like the different lenses that you shot with, the model of your camera, the serial number of your camera, even the camera raw settings that you've done uncropped. I don't have any settings in camera raw applied to these, but if you did, that's where you would find them. Here I have a folder of all of my personal favorite photos that I've taken and edited. And here we see I have a lot more filters that show up because these are all different photos that I've taken with different cameras. We could filter with just the specific lenses, the older camera that I had, my drone, my main camera, my A6500, and even my first camera that I ever shot photos with here. I can filter by focal length. Uh, that is qu pretty in depth because it can see the exact um, millimeter of the lens focal length that you set for each photo. And then if you wanna get rid of them all, you can just click this clear filter button and that gets rid of all your filters, giving you the view of all of the files all at once. Next up, we have an output page, and this is more if you're wanting to make a little canvas of your photos. I've never done this. I don't see myself ever needing to do this, so I don't really know exactly what you would use this for. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip over this window and pretend it doesn't exist and move on to the next window. Here we have metadata, and we can see a lot more detail of each photo. Uh, we've got color profile, resolution, dimensions, and if we click on the image and go down to the metadata window, you can actually edit some of the metadata and add some more information. There's also a similar window for keywords where it shows the content and the various keywords that you can add. So if I go to this guy here, I can add on the lake. And here we see the keyword pop up here and there's both of those keywords. And if we want, we can go back to metadata and we see the keywords populate here as well. Now, if you have the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, whether that's the full subscription or all the way down to this photographer subscription, if you have Camera Raw, you can also edit directly inside of Adobe Bridge. If you right click and open in Camera Raw, it's super snappy and opens up the dialogue window for Camera Raw which is basically like a old version of Lightroom, which is still updated. This image is already edited, but if I really wanted to, I can start editing this inside of Camera Raw. You can click done, and then it will save those edits. If I open it back up into Camera Raw, it'll save all those settings. So you can see how snappy this is, previewing all the photos. Uh, each one is probably well, let's, let's actually see how much they are. Each one is anywhere from four, three or four to all the way up to maybe 10 to 15 megabytes each photo. So it's previewing all those pretty quickly. You can also hide the filters and the name, just see the photos. Now, one thing here is that you might notice that I never added these stars during this video. And that's actually because I added those stars in Lightroom when I was editing these photos. After I exported them, they actually kept those stars and imported the stars with the JPEG into Adobe Bridge. So clearly there's a lot of talking between Photoshop, Lightroom, and Adobe Bridge. There doesn't seem to be as much integration between Adobe Bridge and Premiere and After Effects yet, but I think that's because they have Adobe Prelude, which is more for ingesting and kind of previewing your video clips. But Adobe Bridge still has some decent video previewing capabilities within it as well. So with all that being said, who would use Adobe Bridge? I would say anyone who has a ton of backups and huge amounts of storage. This really helps being able to save your favorite folders for quick access. You can drag your folders down here. And let's say I want best picks in my favorite windows. I can go to documents, 
pictures and have my best picks ready right here for me to preview them. Super speedy and really quick previewing. Graphic designers might also benefit from Adobe Bridge if they have a lot of photo assets. They can right click on the image, go to open with, and you have Illustrator and Photoshop right here. You might also be able to get InDesign in that window as well, but I don't have InDesign uh, installed on this computer. Photographers can also benefit from this uh, because of the mass amount of integrations with Photoshop and Lightroom and the amount of previewing and file structuring that it gives you. And then finally, I would say anyone who's working with a lot of files in general can benefit from this. We can see I have a bunch of invoices. Those are all PDFs. You can preview PDFs in this. You can also see audio files. I don't know if you can preview them. And then I would say anyone else who uses File Explorer or Finder a lot and has to find a lot of files and photos and videos in their system, Adobe Bridge will definitely help you out with that as well. Whether or not you can see a preview of every single kind of file, I still think that you can actually benefit from this because it does seem like they can work with a majority of different file types. Here we can see that it even works with MXF files, which are um, not a normal kind of file format. They're quite a bit bigger usually than MP4s, so there's a lot more data in them. And there's not really as much overall support for those kind of files, but being able to preview it really helps out within Adobe Bridge. So that, my friends, is Adobe Bridge. I have 2021 here, they just released it. 2020 and older versions are pretty similar, so you don't really have to update. There's definitely nothing wrong with updating, unless maybe you have an older system that isn't compatible with the new update. But Adobe Bridge, I recommend. Definitely worth checking out. I hope this quick video helped. If you like it, drop a like. If you loved it, drop a subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.